I'm David and I'm a secondary school science teacher in Nottingham. My name is Zoe Olomoyegan, I'm an English teacher and I teach in an academy in Avely, which is a tiny town in Essex. My name is Munya, I'm a secondary school English teacher and I currently live in Derby. It's been a drastic change from being in the classroom. I've struggled to feel like I'm fulfilling my purpose. It's very difficult to motivate and inspire students to care about English when you can't really interact with them properly. In terms of students who struggle um, or students who want to ask impromptu questions about the work at hand, um, I'm not there to provide them with that insight. I just don't feel that it's something that can completely replace the traditional classroom learning environment. On hearing the news that some exams were going to be cancelled, I really did feel sorry for the Year 11 students and the Year 13 students who, over the last couple of months, have put in an incredible amount of work. It's very difficult to encourage students to still see their education as vital when exams have been cancelled and for some students they feel like the rug has been pulled out from underneath them. I know that those that made this, made this decision didn't come to it lightly. I don't think it's the fairest way per se. It's very devastating for students that you know didn't fulfil their potential over the course of the year. Statistics actually do show that black and ethnic minority pupils can often be um, underpredicted by teachers due to un any unconscious biases that the teachers may have. As a sector, we need to think strongly and deeply about how we're going to compensate for these children missing out on such an important period of their lives. I think parents and families as a whole are now taking more ownership of their children's work. I think one of the upsides of this pandemic is it stressed the importance of independent learning. If there were uh, another pandemic to ever strike society again, we would be relying back on these systems. So I still think it's very valuable for us to keep them. What this has shown is that there are some tasks we do in school that are quite menial and there actually isn't a need for. Um, it also does show us that you know, the kids do engage a lot with the online sessions. I think the long-term impact of the closures is going to have a profound effect on students' ability to enter the mindset of a student. Children are now outside of the school routine and I do feel that a lot of pupils will be struggling to keep themselves motivated and keep themselves disciplined. My expectations are we're going to spend a lot of time reteaching the importance of spelling, punctuation and grammar. I think I'm also going to struggle to re-enter the mindset of teacher and that persona, but I look forward to it. Right now I'm getting into a lot of books, um, catching up on some casual reading. Yoga consistently, which has been amazing for my well-being. I've been doing a lot of music stuff. I've been trying to teach myself new skills in terms of um, using music software, playing instruments, and I've been playing a lot of FIFA. General like arts and crafts at the risk of sounding like a toddler, but it's fun, so I'm not sorry. I think the thing that I'm mainly looking forward to post-coronavirus is meeting up with friends and family in public places, going to cinemas, going to restaurants. I'm excited to be able to hug my friends and be around my loved ones. And I just hope everybody is able to stay sane and safe at this very, very strange time.